I think also over the pandemic, like most people, we were like, okay, like I think like most people felt the urgency, right? Of being like, our time is now, like we need to do something big. Like, is it time to reinvent ourselves? And we even like, were like, should we change our band name? Like that was a debate for like months. Hello and welcome to the Release Day Series podcast. I'm your host, Alex Heward, and today I am stoked to be joined by Vanessa and David of the Toronto-based rock band Goodnight Sunrise, and we're going to talk about their single, Belong, that was released on April 13th, 2022, and probably touch on a couple other things uh, that they've released as well uh, recently, more specifically their other single, One Pill. Now to tee up the band, here are some amazing stats that they've racked up over the years of being a duo. Two full-length albums, and to my count, 17 singles, consisting of some really amazing remixes. They've got over 600,000 streams on music streaming platforms, over 50,000 views on YouTube, and 300-plus shows in the bag, which is you know, I think every musician's dream is to be able to play that many shows as frequently as you can. And that includes festival appearances at the NAMM show in the U.S., Indie Week Europe, CMW, North by Northeast, and Juno Fest. They've also opened for Canadian bands July Talk, Big Wreck, The Sheepdogs, The Blue Stones, and last, certainly not least, definitely not Canadian, Bon Jovi. Wild. So broadcasting from the traditional territory of the First Peoples of the Williams Treaties First Nations, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, Wendat, Inuit, and Métis peoples, this is my conversation with Good Night Sunrise. Vanessa, David, welcome to the Release Day Series podcast. Thank you for making us sound so cool. Where Could you believe those stats yourself? <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, really? I was okay, like, wow, we wow. sound legit. We sound you, like a band. We sound like know, a band. I, I I like to do I like to do my research and find out things about the band that they don't know about themselves. So oh, okay. I'm just you know I'm yeah. just happy that I could provide that insight for you guys. And I'm like I'm straight pretty from sure a, so. straight from our one sheet. That we <laughs> sent you. One sheet. There you go. Yes, there we go. All right, cats out of the bag. I wondered how long we could go with that. Now, um, no, it's it's awesome. So I I've seen you guys I, around the city over the years. Um, I heard heard the name and uh, heard the music, but most recently been totally like captivated by your social media presence regarding oh mostly God, you know your really? yeah, I know this like is it's hilarious so good. this is gonna settle oh my god I'm gonna be able to just end this podcast and be like I told you so I told you <laughs> yeah. so because I know you didn't to ask. me she's gonna say to, that to me not yeah, to you to you because we are literally you're ca- we're in a fight right now we're in a okay. fight over social a media. 10 year long fight <laughs> uh, no, no I believe no I believe that because you know what it's it's like you guys make it look so easy but we all know how like rigorous and like annoying social media yeah. is but it's so great to see you guys having fun it looks like you're having fun <laughs> we were i thought we were having fun david we were we yes look we are having fun but also hate it yeah <laughs> it's definitely a love-hate relationship look I like all you know all artists even myself having this podcast you want to do is like your content right is like it's like yeah. make your music put your music out go play your your shows and uh but i think you guys have just done a, a really good job of of creating a social media presence that is fun that is you know shows your personality and uh, again that's the reason why i was like huh. i'd love to talk with them so. well thank you, thank yes. you. Well, yes yes i <clears throat> yes our approach to yes i reluctantly <laughs> accepted that we had to create a lot of c word we call it the c word around for here. for our one pill release Mm-hmm. And so when we were trying to brainstorm how to do it without descending into depression, <laughs> we decided that we wanted to find a way to do it so that we were still entertaining at least ourselves and still having fun with it while still accomplishing the goal of promoting ourselves. Absolutely. Well, I think Fine I box. think it's working. I, I much to your chagrin, Thank David. You. I think it's working, and uh, but by, yes. again, I also totally <laughs> respect that it is completely <laughs> mentally annihilating. So demeaning, you know, like, also, uh, you know, it's demeaning, demoralizing. It's 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 not good. Right. It's bad. Yep. But let's not it beg it sh- descend to, <laughs> to it negative. Sh- it doesn't uh, show. Space. It's looking good. Uh, I love I love the new singles. I-, I love One Pill. I love Belong. It's great. We're gonna get into those. Just I want to back it up just a bit, just to like yeah. 2011. You guys formed. That's friggin' tw- 12 years ago now. Oh That's my god! It is not 12 years el- ago. 11. 
mm, so, pretty close. <laughs> Yeah, it was 11. My my fault. I didn't do the math right. So talk, how'd you guys get together? How'd you guys form? What What's the origin story of Good Night Sunrise? So one night in maybe 2010, I walked up to these guys at a bar who were playing a show and I was like, you know, kind of drunk. And I said, you guys suck and would sound a lot better with a female singer. And I don't remember <laughs> anything else about the night except that the next day I got a phone call from these guys and they were like, do you want to come jam? And I was like, what does jam mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, not going to back down. So I showed up and I was like, maybe I'll just go in and sing harmonies. I don't know what they want. But they were like, we actually want a new lead singer of the band. Like neither of us want to sing. So I ended up in this band called The Big Deal, having no clue what the fuck I was doing. Never w- been in a band before. Never been in a band. Got like literally kicked out of my high school choir whatever that's another story for another time and we needed a drummer so we put an ad on craigslist and found this little schmuck over here <laughs> look at you <laughs> this little cutie and david ended up in the band as our drummer wow <laughs> and then a year why was that so funny is that the first time you've said you used the word schmuck in your life no what are you talking <laughs> who about who says that i say it all the time <laughs> Uh, okay, well, continue. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> you're in that band. That band lasted a year. Serious drums. It broke up, and me and David started Good Night Sunrise. The end. Awesome. I, I mean, when you go through and you take a look to what you guys have done over the years, even just through social media, you kind of see a really cool visual evolution with you guys as well, and that's sort of led into a bit of a. I guess it has been a rebrand. Would you call it a rebrand or a, or a branding in general with regards to now the logo and the really cool typeface something that you guys have have done with that mm-hmm. is that what you're kind of looking at as a rebrand oh my god i'm so flattered that you even <laughs> noticed this okay yeah yeah it's awesome <laughs> i think it, no i think it's like it's really cool because it gets sometimes it's not it gets tough to think about that kind of stuff and i think that when you use it it's uh, but it's also a lot easier i think as well when you have a bit of a visual identity and i'm not sure if that's the case with you but i just think it's been really cool to see how you've kind of over your tenure of being this this duo have been evolving not only visually but also sonically in my, in my opinion uh and have really been been growing a really really cool way so yeah i don't know could you talk to me a little bit about the the yeah. branding and and how you've kind of determined the visual identity behind the group sure i would i feel like it's also i mean it's less of a fight it wasn't as it's not it's not as much a fight as the social media content thing because that I'm ah, very very cynical about, right. um, but but also accepted. But whatever. But um, but also I think it's something where maybe I've had like more resistance to it over the years in terms of thinking about branding because mm. I think in my mind I can be I can think like it's all about the music man and like it should just like the the songs and the and our live show should just speak for itself right. and that but obviously that's not the case you do have to do things to stand out and vanessa is far more naturally marketing minded i think also over the pandemic like most people we were like itching and feeling like ugh, and like after finally re-emerging we were like okay like i think like most people felt the urgency right of being like our time is now like we need to do something big like is it time to reinvent ourselves and we even like were like should we change our band name like that mm. was a debate for like months and we were making yeah. lists of all these names like i have some good idea I mean, we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't agree on a name like if we can't agree on social media we're yeah, like i suggested the rolling stones for example <laughs> and <laughs> It's just like, no, that's a stupid band name. <laughs> okay, so, are I even made a logo, and she's like, no. It's pretty cool. I made this one, so if you want to take the Heartbreakers, you could do that. Oh, well yeah, with I a, like that. That has a, okay. that has a flying ring. V through a heart, just as, just as an idea. Just but. Yeah. Oh, my God, but yeah. we can make it a flying V-tar. Yes. Oh. Vanessa's dream. My dream. Roland, if you're listening, still waiting. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, okay, I don't know where we were there, but hopefully that answered some of your questions. Yes, yes you we are. we wanted to rebrand. We wanted to grow up. We wanted to mature. And then also with the new music, we were like, it's a new... It's not Well, like- there's a lot of things. Like, we... Because also, it, it, it definitely was... Sorry to interrupt. No, it's fine. I, I interrupted <laughs> you first. It's you... At the... In February of 2020, before the pandemic was but a twinkle in the world's eyes. <laughs> but a we, sneeze in the wind. We, we were, oh God, we were chatting with, stop, that's enough, that's enough. Hold is good. We were already talking with Brian Monkars. We're chatting with him leading up to that point because, yes, as, as you're saying, we have gone through a lot of iterations 
as a band over the years and for the last like five years it has been just the two of us but prior to that right. we did we were a four piece when we started for a few years and then we went through bassists as one does but like our longtime drummer paul was with us but then when he left it became the two of us and so we just have like a rotating cast over the years of of rhythm section um but then also musically we have experimented with some different sounds and like we were playing around with more alternative stuff in our singles in Mm -hmm. previous years but then leading up to the start of 2020 we were talking with brian about wanting to just go more rock because we've always felt like a rock band um but also have wanted to play around with other sounds and stuff like that but he but brian is a rock dude like he he knows how to get those sounds in the studio and he really had the idea of how to do it for us and like how to just have heavier guitars and heavier drums and bass and just a bigger sound and another goal we've always had is like we're very energetic and crazy on stage and we've always wanted to try to capture uh, the energy of our live show onto recording and so brian was like i can do that we can do that so one pill which came out in February of this year, we actually started recording it the month before the pandemic. And Mm -hmm. so we finished that one up in the studio with him and then everything shut down. Um, But that was kind of the start of us like discovering a bit of a new sound in the studio with him. And then over the next couple of years, like we were able to record a bunch more. And then yes, when we finally were able to start releasing it, we thought, well, we've got a totally new sound, all these new songs. Let's do a full yeah. rebrand as well. So let's get some new cool photos and yeah. pretend that we're, we're rock stars. And... Do you think we should have changed our name? Like, what <laughs> band name would you give us? Because we have a list of ideas we had. Or do you like our name? I'm just a po- I'm just what a simple <laughs> podcast host, uh, just looking to talk to you right. guys about, you know. So I, I, I think it's cool <laughs> because I think it's been, I but... think you, I, I do. No, well, I don't. I don't, I don't did know. you notice the thing we did change about our name? There has Uh-oh. been a change. There has been. You're not go- okay. So what we changed is our band name was Goodnight, Comma Sunrise. There was a comma in it, uh, and we thought we were so cool. We were like, "Oh, this is so artsy," but it has been the biggest fucking thorn in our side over the past <laughs> few years because, like, when you're on a festival bill, it's like Goodnight, Comma. Sunrise. sunrise like it looks like two different bands every time we get played on cbc it's like first late name last name so Got we're it. called sunrise good night like and uh, and david has spent like how long has it been now it's, it's still, still ongoing There's we're still, still trying places. to take the comma out of our name like it's still not gone out of every single platform wow. so like our name has changed very slightly imperceptibly yeah. but is. yeah imperceptibly but it's like the biggest deal yeah we're fresh we're new totally. to us it seems like nobody else knows <laughs> Well, I'm sorry oh, that we I do feel but... cl- we feel cleansed of the punctuation. I feel purged. It was like a sage cleansing, and I feel good. <laughs> it's 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 totally it totally works. So look, I, I think I think even leading up to this, your other singles, what you guys were doing with your other music, you kind of you had a cool brand. Your brand was U two, and I and I know I know musicians hate to hear what we're a brand, and we talked a little bit about that, but it was U two in those images, and it and it was it's really cool what you guys were doing because it was like oh I know it's good night sunrise because it's fun. There's a fun image that it looks like they're really you know they're having a good time with putting the visuals together for their music and the music i think really accompanies well with the visuals behind that so i think you know whether you've enjoyed the branding adventure you guys have been really good from the beginning and 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 in partnering with the you know your music and the visuals behind it and i'm glad you brought up the the, the bit of the different sound that you guys have, have come to as well so your new singles belong we're gonna, we're gonna chat about that now and the one thing that i really noticed with that and one pill is yeah heavier crunchier Ooh. was another thing that Ooh. i that really kind of <laughs> came to mind with it and i i think it's just it's it's a really cool like as and as i've been saying is evolution you've got to see you guys sort of with your first album sort of this experimentation i think you kind of making music that you really liked at the time and then as you go through and i think it's um what are the two songs as well uh, won't belong and w v v are really cool mm, uh, waves yeah waves yeah are really cool like that's anthem. what we were trying to be cool by by 
making a title that was just three capital letters so but dumb. it's pronounced differently so and dumb then, no so, one gets it yeah just like the comma is no like, one got uh, it we should have just Lo- okay. simplified love the experimentation though like that's to me what I love <laughs> to right, see about you. that's what I love to see like but you would never know unless you tried it and, unless you do it you guys have been doing yeah. this for, for about 11 years now right and I think yes. that's like hugely mm-hmm. important for artists to know as well that it's okay yeah. to experiment it might be frustrating for you guys but I think it's it shows in the fact that you're still doing this and from what I can tell still loving doing this by the type of music that you guys are putting out that you've used it as look we're learning we're evolving and maybe now you've kind of found a bit of the sound that you want to continue with I'm always a fan of, of musicians continuing to experiment but uh, Belong and One Pill are, are really cool songs and a really great direction Thanks. so does that have to do I guess you know you mentioned it Moncar's being sort of the I guess architect behind bringing some of that, that that rock sound out of you for this what will be a new LP for you yeah for sure he definitely was I I think so yeah I, I, while you were just talking about the, the the evolution thing I was just thinking about how something else that we were discussing in the last year when we were getting ready to rebrand and release new music is we were also like well because sh- like the idea of starting as our new band name is like is it such a fresh start that we are so different than we used to be and then what some bands do is like some bands even will scrap their previous material and like scrub it from all the streaming platforms and so we were like well should we do that because we we feel like like listening to our first album which Mm. is like eight eight years ago like for us it's it's like well it's probably i mean it's it, it holds a special place in our hearts and like definitely proud of it, but, but it's also not like good. Well, well, it's also kind of embarrassing be- yeah. because like it doesn't meet the standard that we have for ourselves. But that's like eight years ago, and so yeah. to to me, I think to us, I also think it is cool. Like part of the reason we left it is like that is part of our history, yeah. and I think it is good to to show that like you do artists naturally will evolve and yeah um, we still play a lot of those songs live yeah some of them like those some of the songs on our first album but, the, but are they like, have evolved like we've yeah they, we've their arrangements evolved cool. and like the way we play them has evolved yeah. yeah yeah but then so in the studio i think when we started out like we've always been inspired by rock mm-hmm. and then also like playing around with other things but like over the years as we do did a couple albums and other singles and stuff then we learn more like we become better writers better performers better musicians and all of that stuff builds up and so got to the point where we were writing some new stuff and then we were also like because also genre wise like rock has been a bit more in the back seat in in the previous like few years but over the last two or three years it seems like rock has started to make a resurgence which is really exciting and so that was also part of our our thinking is like really we're a rock band and we wanted to rock and so um so yeah brian had approached us and then he had worked on um like he's done some work with the tea party and our lady peace and and then he's also really he loves working with local bands and like up and coming rock artists so yeah like some friends of ours ready the prince i remember mm-hmm. he had done an EP for them and that was the best stuff that I had heard from them so uh so that had happened with a few other artists and so we chatted with him and really got along with him and then a huge foundational aspect that he was instrumental so to speak in in orchestrating was (laughs) he because of his work with Our Lady Peace um Jason the drummer and Duncan the bassist Brian was able to bring them on to record on these new songs for us and and that like totally changed the game because they're unbelievable like yeah. the individually they're incredible musicians and the two of them as a unit are so brilliant um so so yeah like we had been writing all of these songs together and demoing them at home and then we would give them to to Duncan and Jason and then they would like use that that as a template but then run with it and do their thing and then being in the studio with them like letting letting them work on on it together and figure parts out and then having brian guide it all it just created this like huge foundation that we were able to then build on with with our parts that was so cool and and that has made a a giant difference too 
yeah, I think it's great that you guys have allowed yourselves as well to to see these opportunities just to work with people like like Brian and and seeing that as part of your growth and and understanding like hey we, we you know we've got a we've got a great history we have a you know um, an awesome resume we want to keep things moving here and these this I mean maybe it sounds like a natural next step and I think it's really important for artists and to to recognize like what you have and I think there's also you know, probably been an evolution as well. Seems to be the big word that I like to use, anyways. In this, in the in the song in the <laughs> songwriting, can you talk to me about belong and and mm -hmm. uh, you know what's behind that? You know, main line of the chorus is we all want to belong, and and I think that this is a, a very you know eh, inspiring, but you know it's a, it's a very real sort of sentiment that a lot of people do feel that that in a wide audience that you guys are reaching out to. So that one is interesting because I literally have you read Laura Jane Grace's book, I, her biography. No. Okay, so I I just read it on audiobook over the course of like a weekend and literally just wrote that song right after it. It was like just I was so inspired by the book itself mm. and all those because she talks so much um, in it just about like that feeling of not belonging, like you know just feeling like so weird in your own skin. It was like sometimes that happens to me. Like I'll watch a TV show or read a book and be so obsessed with it that immediately I write a song about it. Like I can feel what the characters are feeling so much because it's obviously a theme that resonates with so many people, especially right now, where like the past few years have have really been about like realizing that there are people who are in line with your values and those who aren't like it's just become so stark that contrast between those who like you feel like you're part of a community or not and also like feeling like we have no community because we've been locked inside that kind of thing um and yeah and that book just resonated so that's how that came out but just generally because you're talking about the songwriting one pill for example was like we had jammed that like seven years ago oh. and we had just saved the jam and then kept revisiting it and then david was like wrote new lyrics to it but i will say the thing that's like the common thing about us now is i think we're a lot more willing to try like we're just a lot more confident in our songwriting i think that's what it is yeah. i think before we would be like okay we need to write a song and it would take days and this and that whereas now i think both of us are like you know for this for this batch of songs, we were like, we're going to give ourselves 10 days to write these songs. And we just kind of went into it and just did stuff. Like, you know, I would come up with a song and David would immediately take it and make a full demo out of it within hours. Yeah. You know, he he's now capable of doing that, right? Like he's gotten that good at logic and that confident with experimenting, like you said. Like, so I think it's just become a lot more efficient and also cooler things are coming out of us because we're confident to try new things. Would you say? That's my... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think all of those things, like each of us individually have developed a lot of skills around songwriting, either through the music or the like lyrics and, and song structure and stuff like that. Each of us individually have learned a lot of stuff. And then also just because we songwrite together and we love to, we also love to learn how things work and we like like to listen to other songs and hear like, oh, you, you pick up little things from all, all the different influences and like you just put them in your little toolbox and you know like little tricks that that people use in writing or in, in um, arrangements, stuff like that. So yeah, we've just evolved, <laughs> as you say, uh, over the years. And so it is, and yeah, and I think also just confidence too. like. And I think just, you know, it's a good takeaway for other artists to know it's not like a one year, two year, then blow up thing. Like, you know, we need to get out of that, that mentality of just because you can post a song you recorded yesterday while well, you couldn't post it tomorrow on Spotify, you know, it's got to go through its whole process thing, but because you can put things online so quickly, people just feel like it can happen quickly, but there's, there is growth that, that you've got to be willing to embrace and to be part of. And that's just, it's just cool to have seen that from you guys and, and going back and look revisiting and then, and then seeing where, where things are, are going for you now. So all this, these two songs, one pill and belong are culminating into an LP that you'll be releasing this fall. 22, 2022. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. Also, yeah, who so told that... you that? Did I tell you that? I think it was on the one That is top secret information. It, you know? it, it can't be that top secret if we put it on the one sheet. It's just we so we did. don't put the one sheet out to everybody. Oh my but... God, the public knows. The world premiere announcement is happening Well, right we haven't now. said a date. 
the fall is a long it's a long stretch of time so it could fall Alex, you and your listeners should feel very important right uh, now. Oh, we do. We always do. So, but, but yes, yeah, so we definitely <laughs> do now. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's well, exciting. Yeah, it's coming. I mean, it's not that much of a secret. I thought it was a secret. Well, not really. Like the other thing. You told the, me not to tell people. <laughs> We're not supposed to tell. Well, wait, look, it's all, this is the, this is pulling back the curtain on the marketing machine. Right. The which marketing is machine like, is broken. The whole idea the, for okay. interviews, We're, right? The, you've got, you got to stretch out all of, like you, you've got to create all the reveals what other secrets hype. can we tell should we spill all the well, secrets i have a lot of secrets you don't even know about our look, album I, I know i know the social media thing is a bit, it's actually a double yeah, album I, oh sick i know the social media thing is a bit of a it's is not. a bit of a sore spot here but it, but there is just one thing i do want to know just because again i, I really appreciated what you guys are doing there what, what what does it take, you know, because you, you had a really cool campaign around one pill where you told people not to pre-save it and then it turns out everybody pre-saved it, right? It's just, <laughs> Our greatest yeah. work so today. So it's, you know, just fun. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you're doing stuff for Belong, which is, you know, you pulled up, you know, the Globe and Mail, I think was an article or whatever that said musicians are... Questioning their life yeah, decisions. exactly, it's right? True. You know, and uh, it, so, so I guess, you know, when you think about that, it, do these things happen on the spot? Are they spontaneous in like social media posts? Or do you have like a schedule? You know, you've got a single, you know, something coming out I, what's going on here? okay thank you for asking i like to have a schedule personally yep. so yes Hold on, should i film this and then we'll film it this will be meta because we'll have okay, content okay, okay film it film we'll it. have content about this you talking perfect. about content <laughs> so i actually take see how much i've learned okay, about com- hurry up though because we're on a podcast <laughs> Okay, so we are currently filming some content. But so here's how I like to treat this. I think social media, the way to keep sane with it is you have to have a schedule. I like to batch my content. So in one day, I like to just make as much stuff as possible. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And then I have it because the worst is when you're like, oh, God, I got to post something and you can't think of something. And that's when you come up with the inauthentic stuff because you're getting desperate, right? You're just like, I need to do something. And it is a desperate. You're being a pusher. You're being a pusher and you don't want to be a pusher. So the key is to batch because once right, the, I got the content, so once, just so you know, so everyone once, knows. Once the wheels are turning, you can start thinking of ideas. So I just like to get into a flow, you know, whatever. It's cool, right? So like, and then some stuff sure happened. Oh my God, it's raining. Okay, sorry. Then some Well, stuff, that Globe and Mail thing. That the happened other, on the The other fly. day, I just got the news, like I got the morning update newsletter in my email and I was flipping through and it's like, travel is a mess and then and then the next one was like live music is coming back but most musicians are questioning their future right. careers and so, so i just sent it to vanessa i was like look at these ridiculous yeah. things and then she's like hey I can use this for content. The key thing is to not overthink it because the worst thing I think is if you spend a lot of, because the truth is most people are not going to like your content or care about it. Like my video I just posted about people helping me choose my outfit for our show is so good and no one's even looking at it. So it's like, I really feel for the people that spend a lot of time on content because like, what the fuck is the point? In my mind, it is quantity over quality just pump some shit out honestly you know (laughs) and you never know what people are gonna like people like the weirdest thing so it's like Mm. with stuff like promoting these singles the hope is that you're gonna get people to fucking pre-save it which you're supposed to do right so eventually you and then uh, you hope with reels that like it'll reach some audience members that aren't already yours so you just i don't know i just like it's like throwing shit at the wall or whatever that saying is spaghetti rice i don't know what it is (laughs) yeah so you just like throw some shit out and hope it works and then i'm also like I have very little like dignity left really in terms of like, oh, am I being embarrassing? Being like, oh my God, hi. If you're a da da da, then you should pre-save. I really don't yeah. care. Like people are going to look at me one way or another and they're going to think I'm a sellout. They have since day one or they'll think I'm embarrassing and they have since day one. The people who actually care about you and our fans are not going to think that stuff. They know why you're doing what you're doing. And just like you, like they'll think we're funny or they won't like, Yep. Fuck. Uh, you know? Yeah, and I think we have <laughs> tried at least to be <laughs> just, to yeah, yeah. Just we we it's so hard to resist the temptation to feel like you have to do what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And that's I think everyone feels that pressure where you see what are all the trends and then you're like, Well, I guess I have to do this trend in order to compete with everyone yeah, else. Seen. But yeah. we try to balance that with doing the stuff while also still trying to be honest and genuine as right. people and as a band so we still try to like 
Like with that, with the one pill series that we did, like it was very satirical and it was a lot of fun for us because then we could be making fun of the fact that we have no choice. We have to do this, but at least like everyone else could be in on the joke. And like a lot of our fellow musicians and bands were reaching out and they were like, oh my God, I completely relate to this. Thank you for doing this. Um, so yeah, we just try to like be at least still be but that ourselves took, and that genuine. That took so much fucking yeah. time. That's the irony of it all. Is it that took way that longer? That one did, but we took on a lot for that. We did, but I'm just saying. But yeah, like, like that was a couple weeks. That was like a lot of recording even our and satirical, editing. And putting, like, yeah. yeah, like our satirical promotion took longer than our actual promotion. So who's <laughs> yeah. the fucking? But for, yeah. well, who's losing yeah. here? Yeah, but yeah. but one bill was our first like big new release and and like reemergence. But it was, in a long yeah. time so we wanted to put a lot into that yeah. whereas for belong you're still doing a bunch of those dumb videos but you're not putting as much it takes like two we, seconds we didn't put nearly as much like big campaign into that you're just doing more kind of whatever comes to mind you know it's always interesting to hear that i mean all artists know about being on social media these days and i don't know if you know the duo mountainhead they are like awesome at social media you guys should, should check them out but they're very much themselves I know yeah. of them. We we don't know them personally, but I definitely know who you're talking they're, about. They're okay. they're great with social media, and that's the big thing. Like, music's amazing as well, but their social media presence is great. Yeah. But it's genuine. It's authentic to who they are, and but that's also what drew me to to you guys. Is it felt real, and and you could tell that artists were like, yeah, we get this. And so I I it's on Mountainhead. We're just on the last episode two episodes ago and we just the thing the big takeaway was you know what you don't have to do what everybody else is doing but look at what others are doing and think about think about how maybe you can implement that into something that works for you not necessarily that you have to go and copy people oh like i don't want to do that that's not me okay well there's something that is you that you want that you can demonstrate to your community that doesn't make it always feel like it's a big a big chore to put out social media content you guys are too you're going where are you, are you guys going to Malta? Malta? I would, what, what, no. no. We're going to Estonia. Estonia. Close. But I'll go to Malta if there's <laughs> yeah. any Malta bookers. We will go anywhere. We will literally go I mean, anywhere. It's not, like you're, it's not like you're going to London, Ontario, though. You're like, you're, you're leaving the country to play. No, we're going farther than yeah. that, yeah. We would go there, too, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm actually way more scared of going to London, Ontario, than <laughs> Estonia. London scares me, to be honest. <laughs> yes, and you guys are playing a ton of shows. It's like, Well, it looks like, it. anyways, you got some great, um, great bills that you're going to be playing on uh, coming up. So I guess it's like touring or at least shows are it's back it's back for you guys it's happening we are we're hoping we're hoping. hoping yeah yeah we've we're announced hoping. some some summer festivals and hope uh we'll be announcing some more stuff coming up um but yeah we are very very excited uh and excited to be playing all these new songs awesome well Vanessa, David, I know. Thank Any you. Any final questions? No, no. This is, is that this it? is it. Yeah. Like this is this has been great. Like I, I, I love chatting with you. It's been real. Thank you for taking the time Same. to uh, talk Same. with me. Likewise, thank you for having yeah, us. Thank my you. pleasure. All right, guys. Well, all the best with everything. Do you have to say bye now? <laughs> You're so <laughs> awkward at saying bye. You can discover more podcast episodes as well as our limited video series on our website, www.releasedayseries.com. And if you'd like to support the show, we've added that option to the website as well. Send us a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, whatever you'd like. Any support helps. But most importantly, we appreciate you listening and sharing the podcast. Mm-hmm.